Righto, so, you bought it home, and you think to yourself, I might buy a car online. Let's have a look at what not to do. <laughs> like this thing. So this morning I had about 15 phone calls before I get out of bed. The guy that bought this, bought it online from some place on the Gold Coast, I think it was Lloyd's or something like that, an auction place online. Um, report was done, it was all done. Supposedly good, had his mate look at it and all this carry on, right? But the moment I saw this car, there was things that just jumped out at me that screamed, don't buy it. So. I'm gonna unload this and I'm gonna go through what I saw when I walked up to the car. Um, onto, you know, and I looked at him and said, you bought this from an auction, didn't you? He said, yes. He goes, how can you tell? I said, because I just can. So anyway, I'm gonna get this unloaded, okay? And we'll go through what I saw and then we'll go through what was wrong. He bought it on the Gold Coast, he was driving it back to Rocky, it got hot and I ended up buying it. So. I'm not completely convinced the head gasket's gone, but there is an issue there. But we also will do a TK test again to show you how to check for a head gasket. It's a $150 little box machine that, yeah, if you buy a lot of cars, you really should have one. Anyway, let's get this unloaded. Let's have a walk around and we'll point out some little telltale signs that someone's hiding something from you when you're buying a car. Righto, so I'm, before I take this off the truck, we'll have a look. Sometimes it's better to be able to see imperfections from a different angle because when someone's repairing an imperfection they're looking down on the car like they normally do it down there but because it's up here it alters the angle of where you look at the car okay which means you see more imperfections now the first thing i see on this car is it's done a lot of beach work that doesn't mean it's bad it just means it needs to reflect the price you're going to pay for a car like just looking from just here you can see up here in the roof rack Okay, it's rusty in those latches. Okay, it's something you can't hide. Like, can you there see in that latch just up there is rusty? And not only that, it's very hard to protect these tags on the tow bars, and that's rusted in. The pin won't even move, which indicates it's done a lot of beach work. Okay, the other thing is, is the auction house has sprayed all this black underneath the guards, which isn't a bad thing. It's not a bad thing they're trying to tidy the car up. But, are they trying to tidy it up or hide it? The way it's been done is super dodgy. Like, there's overspray here. They haven't really got up in there and done it properly. Um, same as here. It's, it's, it's not a bad thing, but it's not. But then when you look under the front here, see, most of the chassis made quite strong, but then you have add-on pieces like this, but you can see how bad that's rusted because of the beach work. But in saying that, up in here, it's still quite good. Now, when you come around the other side, you'll see they have masked it, but they're that lazy, they haven't even taken the masking tape off. Okay, so it's been done very recently just to sell it. Sometimes I would prefer to see the imperfections, see what sort of discolorations under there. Another telltale sign that this car is a good car but it hasn't been maintained very well is you look at the shock absorbers and look at the rubbers that hold the shock absorbers. This one's missing altogether up in the top there. Okay, when you look through on the other side there, see there? That one's fallen out altogether, and the one on this side is not any better. Shock absorbers are one of the last things that, um, the shock absorbers might be fine, and it's not an expensive thing to replace the rubbers in those shock absorbers, but it's one of the last things that people think about replacing. You can drive your car, you can go everywhere without shock absorbers. It might drive a little bit funny and whatever, tire wear, but, it's the last thing that people want to spend money on is shock absorbers. So it shows you that the car was maintained to a point where it'll go, but not maintained to a high standard. Um, the steering rack boot's gone on it on this side, but that's, that's pretty standard in a cheaper car where you've got to do steering rack stuff. The other thing that troubles me is it's been painted here and up that rear quarter, right? 
That door hasn't been painted. I don't think it's been hit in the rear. This side's been done, but super dodgy. Like, there's a masking line right there that you should be able to see. Like, whether it was just clear fleck or what it was, I don't know whether perhaps this was a tow for the boat and there was a lot of salt water onto the back. It hasn't been hit in the rear because this is obviously an original bar. Those scratches match those scratches and where this goes on is original. So it hasn't been hit in the rear, but it's still, what are they trying to hide? But it's just one of those things. The big one for me though, and the big one for anyone going to look at a car that then, a second hand car they don't know a lot about, when you see rubby fingerprints all the way along here and at the door, that means it's had a recent mechanical issue. And if you see that at the auctions, it means they've dollied that car up just enough to get it to run and to sell it. So there's been a mechanical issue. They've replaced a heap of parts recently and they haven't cleaned the car properly. They should have, instead of painting underneath the guards, just washed the car. Right, I'll get this unloaded. We'll have a look under the bonnet and we'll see what they've actually done to try and hide whatever issue it is. And we'll try and hunt down the actual issue and go from there. But anyway, yeah, so painting under the guards, just be careful, they're trying to hide something. Always look at your shocky rubbers because no one replaces them. They're not a high priority and you can sort of see whether a car's been maintained really well or not. Like on my ute, because I love the SS50, the link pins, the boot was slightly scored on one side, so I replaced both and put it back together because I care about that, maintain it to a high standard, and it's a good car, which is worth good money. But when you're looking at second-hand cars in the cheaper range, you can still get something that's been well-maintained, but there's small telltale things that tell you that it hasn't been. Get this off, let's have a look under the bonnet. You'll see what I mean here, more about these handprints. Now it's down on the ground, like, so you've got handprints here, grubby buggers all across here, and then here on the thing. The other telltale thing, I hadn't even looked inside this thing, but I just looked in there then. When you are looking to buy a car and there's big water bottles in the back, it means you've got an overheating issue and it has had for a while. Or if you turn up at a house and you walk down the driveway and you can see that there's a lot of discarded water bottles and stuff around where the car's parked, people are lazy. They don't pick up on the small things. And yeah, this side's the same, see? Very, a lot of discoloration. They should have ran some polish over it and it would have been a lot better. But we'll keep looking and see what we can find. Okay, so under the bonnet, I don't see anything terrible. Nothing that really jumps out at me except for it has a brand new radiator in it. Okay, and a car with an overheating problem with a brand new radiator is an issue. Always check your radiator cap to make sure it's not split. The center hasn't fallen out of it. That one looks to be new with this radiator. Okay, so I can't see anything else there. I can't see any leaks. I can't see anything bad. It hasn't been crashed. Motor runs fine. So yeah, from here, we need to dig deeper. TK test. We need to see how much water it's lost and why it was overheating. We need to see if the cooling system will bleed. It could come down to something as simple as the radiator was blocked before they have put a new radiator in it and then you can see they were in a rush to get this to the auctions because they haven't cleaned all the dirty handprints off it maybe they just didn't bleed the cooling system maybe the thermostat's not just opening um, he did say that it had, had a timing belt and stuff done let's pull her apart do a few more checks see if we can't sort it out and then we'll clean this up properly and sell it once it's good but anyway i hope those tips so far are helpful there's just little things that don't add up all the way around the car. So we've just got to pick, st put the story together and see what's actually happened to it. Anyway, let's get into this um, cooling system check and see where we end up. Right, right, we're starting under the bonnet. So as we've gone through, I've just noticed this wire's off, but we're thinking that's maybe driving lights or something that's been taken out of the car because it ended up at the auctions. The water is down, so we're going to put some water in and see how much is lost. The clutch fan you was playing with a second ago, was there much resistance no, on it? No, it fine. Well, the clutch fan, when you turn it, it grabs a bit, so it won't just freely spin, which means the clutches are grabbing, which means it should be cooling. And other than that, I can't see anything else, can you, that's not sort of yet, not... No, um, the problem is though, like, it did get hot, obviously the water was full, it hasn't pushed it into the overflow, so the water must have gone somewhere else. So, 
If it's not an external leak on the engine somewhere, yes, we may be looking at head gasket or even cracked head perhaps, but that's why we'll we'll chuck the water in it. Um, we'll then give it a TK test to see if there's any combustion in the cooling system, and then that will be you know determine what's going on. If there is no combustion in the cooling system, that's great. That means, yes, we may be looking for an external leak somewhere, but also too, if there is no combustion and it is losing water, it can still be internal, but not in the actual combustion like not the head gasket you know bore or something like that or cracked head because a head gasket can blow in many different ways between cylinders between oil galleries and cylinders between water galleries and oil galleries yeah but anyway let's follow the process we'll put some water in it now we'll do this tk test and yeah hopefully we find something okay so it's taken about 500 ml so far when it started, then it started on four cylinders, but that's still not a um, conclusive test. It could be the thermostat not opening, an air blocking, there's so many different options that it could be. I, I still think if the thermostat wasn't opening, it'd still try and push the water into the overflow bottle. Uh, and the overflow bottle is near empty. Like, if that was trying to push it out for some other reason, that would have overflowed. But he would have overheated it twice. Once up the black butt range and once up the, um, the Yarraman range. Yeah. And the water bottles in the back of the car were full, which means he didn't stop in between and do water. So, no, he yeah. just didn't care, really. Yeah. It, it's like being a detective. But anyway, let's see how much water it takes. So what we're going to do now is a TK test, which is a chemical test, which is this device here. So you have the blue liquid in here, okay, you get the engine up to running temperature, your hot vapors will come out, they'll bubble up through here, and if it goes, if CO2, which is what your engine creates when it's running in the cylinder, is in the cooling system, it'll turn this green. So here we go. So basically, block, block off your overflow first, so it can't suck air through, so I'll just stand those on there, so it can't suck through. So you put that on there, a little ball bearing packed in there, so I'm going to put my finger over it. So you just squeeze it, and then cover the hole, and you'll see the bubbles come through. If that stays blue, there's no head gasket issue. If it goes green, it's pumping any slowly changing colour. So like if it was bad, that would have changed instantly. I've never seen it go this slow before. I don't know if it's changing this. No, it's, I don't think it is. Well, you notice a, a definite change in the green. That'll go green grass. Oh yeah, for sure. I think this is one of those ones where Lee's going to have to drive it for a couple of weeks. There you go. Well, we're going to try that two or three more times just to make sure, but at this point, it looks like we have another issue. So whether it's thermostat opening or something like that, but to me, the head gasket's not blown. It runs on four cylinders properly. It's been idling away here for a while. Um, we're going to have to chase more issues. And this is why this one may have ended up at the auctions, because it's not a straightforward job. All right. Now... Don't please take this video of do not buy cars from the auctions. There's no difference between buying a car at the auctions and buying a car on Gumtree or Facebook. You just need to check and you need to be able to see the signs that someone's trying to hide something from you. Okay, nothing against the auctions at all. Okay, so we re-TK-tested TK it a couple of times. Okay, but now what we've found, okay, is... Now with your cooling system, once the thermostat opens, everything should be pretty much the same temperature. The top hose is hot. The bottom radiator hose is cold, like it's, it's warm. So a little bit of water's getting through to heat things up. So what could be happening is when we revved it before and it come out here, it's because it, it just couldn't circulate. It just pressurized it in it and, and shot back out. So it's showing signs of a blown head gasket, but it's not. It's because the thermostat's not opening, which is not allowing it to flow through the radiator and create a circuit which means in normal driving around town, it probably won't get hot, but once you put that under load and start going up a hill, but they put a new radiator in it, who wouldn't do a thermostat? So we've got to investigate further and see where we end up. All right, so Captain's been playing getting the thermostat out. 
Okay, so the thermostat is down in there and is an absolute pretty good job. And it's never been out. So my suspicions when I got it that the head gasket wasn't blown. We were right there because we tested it. But it, and the radiator had been replaced, which means it can't be the radiator blocked. And the thermostat is a prick of a job, so things are leaning towards the thermostat not working properly. So we're going to get this out, boil the kettle, put it in a glass of boiling water, see if it opens up, or see if it partly opens up, or see if it's clogged up or an issue, and we'll put a new one in, and that should fix this thing getting warm just up a hill. Righto, so Captain's got the thermostat back in this thing, um, but we couldn't really drive it. When I test drove it, it drove like shit, and I'm not surprised the guy that I bought it off I'm starting to think now that the overheating problem wasn't the main issue. I think it's the fact that the thing drove absolutely terrifyingly because it didn't drive real nice when I drove it. But you can see the top plate, well, you see how offset that is in the shock. There's no rubber underneath there. And when you look at the top, that's supposed to be in the center. So the shocks are rubbing on the side of the spring and they're absolutely rooted. He's already sorted the other side out but we're gonna to have to put new shocks and stuff in it. But we just gotta do a few of these sort of repairs. The bottom rubber's not totally bad, but it's not the best. We're, this thing's just that bad that you can't even really, we need to put a few Ks on it to test this motor properly. So we need to sort. Without the rubbers there, there's an inch and a half of suspension travel before the shock does anything. Like as the suspension goes down, that part of the shaft of the shock will actually be coming through to about there. And so it's basically just riding on the spring. The shock is doing nothing at all. So and once I put some rubbers in there, at least it'll get it good enough for us to drive and check out everything else while we order and wait for some new struts to put in it. And they're some of the worst I've ever seen, to be honest. Yeah, same. Yeah. It's like been like that for a very, very long time. The other one is almost worn through the silver shaft that runs up the center. Like yeah, it's, yeah it's, probably it's, about a third of the way through the actual yeah, shock shaft. That's, that's itself, how bad so it is. We can't sell it like that. Yeah. So. But the motor, we, yeah, the motor, the box, the rest of the car, the interior is not too bad. So it's still worth repairing. It's just... Yeah, it's just going to be a better car because of what we've got to repair. But anyway, that's what happens. Okay, just got back from a test drive in the Prado. Temperature gauge is absolutely spot on. Um, yeah, drove all the way to Yarraman through all the hills, turned around, went up the big hill, left it in a high gear to load up the motor, make sure it wouldn't overheat. Temperature gauge didn't move at all. So the thermostat has pulled this up, which is absolutely fabulous. Um, what Leith done with the front shocks um, has made it actually drive like a decent car. There's a vibration somewhere else, tail shaft we're thinking it is. But for now, yeah, can be cleaned up and yeah, go, gone through. If we find anything else major, I'll include it in another video. But I hope that helps some of you guys that look at cars, the buy cars, pointing out a few little things that you can see to indicate a car that's not um, as well looked after or as well serviced as it could have been. Even though it looks like a reasonable car, you know, there's little things to look at. A car that's got a brand new radiator in it and the head gasket hasn't been done is always a problem because motors do not build pressure, excessive pressure without the head gasket being gone. But um, yeah, or another issue being there. Radiators don't just explode. Anyway, see you.